And if it's all right with you, um, to, to, if we can go back, it was the 30th of September and you'd been out and about because you'd been doing coursework for your media studies. Yeah, I, was, um, I needed some late night bar shots, so I was out quite late naturally. So you were out, so it's about two o'clock in the morning yeah. and, and you've just left with a friend and you start walking home. Yeah. And it was down a residential street, wasn't it? Yeah, it was big street, cars parked, houses everywhere, very open, not like a dark alley that you'd sort of... You would think that yeah. something dangerous yeah. was going to happen. And you felt a hand on your shoulder? Yeah, um, well, he asked me where I was going, first of all, and I thought that this was just another sort of drunk, friendly guy having a conversation. I didn't think much of it. My town's got quite a few bars and clubs, so it's not uncommon. But it, it was when he touched me that I thought, oh, God, there's, there's something wrong here. People don't usually sort of invade your personal space in yeah. that way. Yeah. And, and then? And then... Um, I said I'm going home, he touched me, I flipped record on my phone because I thought he was going to mug me and I thought well maybe I could get him on record but obviously he started tackling me to the ground. Um, I think by that point I was in such a state of shock I didn't even, I forgot that I was recording but luckily managed to get a glimpse of his face. Well you had your torch on as well didn't you on the, on the phone? Yeah, I was texting and I just had some light to sort of guide my way. Cause it because, was we'll come back to this in just a moment, because the streetlights had been turned off to save yeah. money by the by the local council, yes. which you're campaigning for. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I don't know necessarily that there is any great reason for us to take you through the horror of that night. Um, and uh, suffice to say that you were severely sexually assaulted. Um, and uh, and it was the noise that, of the commotion uh, that alerted neighbours. Uh, lights came on. People came out onto the balcony, and that yeah. thankfully scared him away. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And then you managed to get only a few paces to, yeah, to your house. Yeah, I was house. about sixty seconds away from home, and I was oh, sort God. of like running, limping, trying to hold myself together. I was hysterically crying. Um, key through the door and sort of screaming to my parents so that this is and your uh, every mm. mum oh my and dad's gosh, worst possible nightmare yeah yeah and she was just in such a, a terrible state and it took us a few seconds to to sort of come around and to put the lights on but it was it was instantly obvious what what, what it what it to me what had happened and her distress was beyond anything i've i've ever seen really and uh, you called the police and uh, yeah. and the two officers um arrived but whilst you were waiting for them to arrive you looked at the footage on the phone yeah and i can't imagine as a parent i mean it would be distressing for anybody to rewatch something like that but yeah. as her as her mum yeah as her daughter well, for both of us for both myself and uh, Chris, my husband, Lil's dad. It, I mean, it was it was just awful. But in some way, you disassociate because you've got a job to do. Mm. You know, you've got your daughter to look after. She comes first. Mm. So it was it was just natural to want to hold her and to, yeah. you know, have that sense of things that have to move forward. And can he be found? Is he still out there? Yeah, just of course. All, all of, of that course. really. Well, then you've also you have the the process then that uh, that you have to go through um, for the collection of DNA. Uh, they, they, you're not allowed to wash. Yeah, it was horrible. Sort of not even being able to brush your hair, mm. and then they take your fingernails and just sort of. It, it's it's really intimate and nasty, and it's just very clinical and cold. And I, I had a mock exam less than maybe like 12 hours prior to when it happened, and it was just like I was just thinking like, what am I doing? How did I go from sitting in a classroom to being here with yes. these yeah. strangers like examining me? It was it was horrible. And medication as well to make sure that you were uh, that yeah, you were okay. Yeah, the HIV prevention medication that was um, horrible as well. It um, it left me nearly bed bound because it just made me so sick, and I had to keep getting blood tests um, like every week um, to see if my liver was still functioning because they were so potent. That oh it, gosh, it was difficult. But thankfully, everything all clear and, and you're in. Oh you're yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, they the, the the police looked at the footage and they managed to get a, a still, and it was through the still that they then went from door to door and managed mm. to to find out who the attacker was, yeah. and and they got him. Yeah. And so your quick thinking on that night to, to press record essentially led to him being found. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I still can't really believe it. Um, they did find DNA on me, but they couldn't find him, and that was quite... It was a bit of a disappointing moment, but then they were like, OK, we've got this still, and we've matched it up, and I was like, wow, really? So I, I 
I feel like I have caught him in a sense. And not you in did. a sense. Gosh, it's thought to be the first time ever that a victim's own footage of an entire attack has helped to put a sexual attacker behind bars. You also say, and this is a, a very positive message to anyone who might be going through something like this, is don't let it define you. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I had a few wobbles where I think I should not be going out, I should be staying at home and not getting sort of enjoying myself and then I think no I'm going to go out, I'm going to be who I was before the attack and more than that as well I'm going to... I just think you need to realise that because it's happened, it doesn't mean that it... I mean, it will linger, but you, you're, it strengthens you, in a sense, because you're able to talk to other people about it. The amount of people that have come to me and said, this has happened to me, some even saying you're the first person I've told, and they're living in fear the whole time because of this some sick people that think it's OK. I just think... Well, you're an incredibly strong girl. Terribly inspirational. Proud. I yeah. am. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> you should be. Thank you. Well done, you. Thank you. Well done.